Well, hello. We are at the home stretch, sort of. This is episode 10, chapter 10, pretentiousness, remember? And yeah, I'm going to name it Cradle Will Rock because if you couldn't guess, I watched Cradle Will Rock this week. And overall, I, I've had this idea for a while now. And this week, two things happened. One, the Cradle Will Rock. And then uh, Quentin Reviews, a YouTuber that I watch, uploaded a video about Watchmen. And so, yeah. This, this time I'm going to be a little bit uh, less personal, meaning it's not going to be about my personal life. Nothing interesting happened, uh, just normal week. I can't tell you what happened, but it, it'll be boring. And uh, yeah, and the drink, by the way, is cranberry syrup and water. And oh my god, there's a motorcycle outside and uh, yeah it's a different brand than the last one and it's good it's good i really like it it tastes sort of nostalgic to me i don't know why i it's not like cranberries are abundant in iran but i think this flavor may not be cranberry or if it was it was used in a lot of you know um sweet drinks back in the day who knows so yeah, and oh, so this week, this chapter is going to be about politics, yay, yay, fucking politics, but most importantly, politics and art, what is the uh, relation to each other, because uh, as I was watching the Quentin Reviews video, uh, it was talking about how Watchmen, when it came, was talking about a very political issue, which it was. And then comic books sort of destroyed it, which they did. The comic book industry sort of destroyed Watchmen by Doomsday Clock and all that shit. And, uh, well, so it's no longer political. It doesn't talk about now. And... It's worthless because good works of art need to reflect the times. And um, then I watched Cradle Will Rock, which was way more aggressive in its <laughs> interpretation. And art that isn't, in other words, holding a mirror to society is worthless. It's, uh, how do I say it? It's like prostitution, you know. They are hears. I'm saying hears because I said, uh, oh God, not John Oliver. John Stewart said it once and it was very funny. So I'm stealing it from him. And um, so if you are not holding a mirror to society, you are effectively prostituting your talent and your art. I don't know if I believe in that. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't, actually. Uh, 100% I don't. Uh, and, uh, well, here is my my two cents. First of all, I live in Iran. And I have a circle of acquaintances that are writers and artists in of, in and of in the, themselves. And movie makers, graphists, painters. Anyway. You know what I mean. And, and there seems to be sort of a... God, cars just keep going. There seems to be sort of a unfair... I'm saying unfair. Unjustified uh, attention to keeping things political. Meaning uh, most of the... People I know who are writers imagine that if the story you're writing is not talking about something political, I don't know, the what happened recently, for example, the um, explosion in Beirut. You need to talk about that. If you don't talk about that, fuck you, you're not a good writer. And, uh, yeah. And they do get 
they won't share our followers based just on that because they are political. And then you have the idiots who just uh, <laughs> who just see it as that. Meaning, if your story isn't talking about any of that, they just refuse to even acknowledge it. So, I disagree with them because uh, I don't think art primary use, primary uh, prophecy, primary well, use was the best word, is to hold the mirror to society and reflect what is happening. It is one of its uses. And I'm, I'm, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I've done it. Mine is more personal. Rather than I don't talk about the explosion in Beirut because I don't care about the explosion in Beirut. It happened to people that I don't know. So I don't care. And, um, yeah, I know that's selfish and all of that, but I don't care. I talk about stuff that ha I care about. I talk about being stuck at home for six months. So, yeah, my movie is about that rather than, oh, bad government, bad practices blew up a port. I'm... I'm Focusing on that incident because it's very recent. There are a lot more. And um, so I was watching Cradle Will Walk and the whole thing of the artist's um, duty to represent the whole. Uh, and Cradle Will Walk is a good movie, by the way. If it wasn't a good movie, I would just sort of, uh, you know, brush it away saying, okay, you said what you want. Go away now. But it was a good movie, it talked about a lot of different things, about the musical Cradle of Rock, about uh, Diego Rivera's work for Nelson Rockefeller, which if you don't know, he painted a painting in the lobby and he put Lenin's face there. And so they uh, they destroyed the painting. <laughs> because, yeah, you, you don't put a communist leader's face on a capitalist building, but well, that's Diego Rivera. And I sort of admire that, that he stood up and he refused to remove the face. They had to literally destroy the whole painting. And uh, I admire that, that he stood for his political views. And I have some views that I will definitely stand up for. But I don't think that is all. A work of art needs to do to say it in other words if a work of art is purely political and talking about what is happening there it will be useless by the next time you read it because time has passed and uh, it doesn't make any sense so for example one of my uh, one of my favorite novels is uh, 1984 by George Orwell now, it was very apparent when he wrote it that he was talking about the communist state and the faith, sorry, my tongue got tight, communist states and how they are going about, you know, going about doing their business. And so it was very obvious then, and, but the book wasn't all about uh, that. If it was just, oh, look, I am showing you how it works. Nobody would remember it. Like a lot of other works that did just that and nobody will remember them. And, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, fuck. Sorry, my, uh, <laughs> my throat. Uh, something got stuck in it. And, uh, it, it's about uh, hope in even the most dire of situation and how a system can break that hope. So it's about that, but it's also talking about the communist state and that. But to some idiots, and I'm saying idiots because they are idiots, and I know a few of them. <laughs> I've talked to a few of them. Thankfully, no longer anymore, but I've talked to a few of them. Uh, it's all about that. They don't see the hopeless 
darkness or the character of Winston Smith. They don't understand that that's a character and that's why we care about that world. No. The world is talking about what was happening at the time back then and that is all we ever remember from 1984. They are not wrong. We all remember the aesthetics. But we don't remember it because it was talking about Russia. We remember it because uh, we remember how Winston Smith felt about all of this. Uh, there is this writer guy I know that uh, wrote a fucking short story for a site and uh, it was so obviously talking about uh, 2019 Iranian protests. Which, okay, you want to talk about that? But the fact is, uh, like four months later, uh, I was reading it and it already looked dated because it didn't have character. It, it, it was just a reference to that. And he and his friends just read it and masturbated them. They did a circle jerk and uh, robbed each other and they were felt good. But the truth is, that is not story. Um, art, in my opinion, can be a reflection of the time. I if it is, it's it's a good quality to have. But if that's all it is, it is worthless. That that is my opinion. You can't go on talking about the conflict in the Middle East, even though at at some point time will run out and earth will be destroyed and by then your story will be fucking void before that earth will be destroyed the sun will warm up and burn everything so what is your story literally void when there is no conflict in the middle east or when there is no middle east for it to have a conflict so yeah uh, that, that that was my two cents. I know it's a lot of it's it's incoherent because I don't I I'm doing all of this improvised and uh, I know I should write this stuff down. But another thing I wanted to talk about is another aspect of that story and it's art for money. And I wanted to put roll on the headless Thompson gunner, but then I realized that was about. Rebellion, not about art, but the last line of it was Patty Hearst heard the burst of Roland's Thompson gun and bought it. And that, that part I actually very much agree with uh, Cradle of a Rock. Um, there are a lot of things you can do to uh, let go of your morals. Everybody have a buying price. But for an artist to do that, you are literally just selling, you are prostituting yourself. There is no other way around it. If you are destroying all of your morals, all of your views, just for the fact that, oh, I might lose a little bit of money. Uh, well, fuck you. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, again, in Iran, it's very common for that to happen. You know, you see people who are saying one thing and then doing another thing because, well, saying it, uh, it's, it, it actually doesn't uh, affect them. But doing it, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going to lose my salary if I do that. And I understand. I'm, I'm talking out of my ass. <laughs> But a lot of these uh, people that I'm talking about, they are well off. Not going to say which. They are well off. They can uh, sort of stay by their views. I'm not saying stay by the people or what the people say is good. No. No, you might actually believe that, um, I don't know, what is something uh, heinous. You actually may believe that cannibalism is good for humanity and we should go back to cannibalism. I have to go back. You should do cannibalism. You believe that. I don't give a shit what people think about that. You believe that. Stand for what you fucking believe, mate. <laughs> there is this uh, historical figure in Iran. Called, he has a 
street named after him called Sheikh Fazlullah. And I always say there are three uh, religious figures, Ahund, that I hate, and one of them is Fazlullah. Because this guy, uh, <laughs> this guy was all about uh, Mashuta. He really supported it, all of that. Then he realized, oh, I'm not getting my cut. <laughs> and he flipped. He flipped like that. And yeah, he is one of the most uh, disgusting people ever because he literally stopped the progress of uh, Mashuta because he wasn't getting his cut. And he made it so that there is this thing in Iranian lawmaking that all of your decisions need to go to uh, a process called Shorayn Gahban, which is the Guardian Council. And they have to see if your laws are not in contrast to the Islamic teachings. And all of that is because of this one motherfucker who <laughs> couldn't believe he wasn't getting uh, his cut. So, yeah. And uh, I've, I've seen a lot of artists like that, too. And I don't care if what you believe is unpopular. I don't really actually care about people who... I watch the work of, uh, meaning I don't care what is the political views. If I see something in the movies that I don't agree with, I don't agree with the movie. I don't care what the guy is saying. There are exceptions, like Michael Bay, because I hate Michael Bay movies, and then I realize, well, maybe the guy is okay, and then I realize the guy is also a piece of shit. So. But I really hate those people who flip-flop. They are uh, just following what is popular. And this is why I have lost a huge amount of respect for some people. There is this other guy that I know who... I, I'm telling you there is uh, there's this thing that I realized a lot on Twitter and a, a lot on, uh, well, a few acquaintances of mine that they don't have a original idea in their head. They all have access to YouTube and on Wikipedia, so... That's how they inform themselves. Most of them believe they are writers or artists. They are not. At least if they are writers and artists, I think uh, I don't want to call myself a writer and an artist because I don't want to be grouped with them. <laughs> and uh, none of them have a clear brain. You don't understand their taste you don't understand uh, what they like because they don't have a taste of their own their taste is dictated by them from what videos they watch uh, they hate uh, Bill and Ted and then they watch a video that is talking about Bill and Ted and then the next day they love Bill and Ted because they don't have a taste the overlords told them you like this now? And they said yes. By the way, I watched Bland Head face the music. And there's only one minute left. I told what I wanted to about how politics should affect art and how I feel about it. I don't let politics really affect my art because I don't really have a political agenda. I don't care about politics. They bore me. I care more about the politics of uh, Tamriel. That I really do care about. And yeah, uh, Imperials... All right, uh, fuck stone clocks. But that minute left, I watched Blanted face the music also on the same day that I watched Cradle of the Rock, and it was good. It was actually really good. I really liked it. It was fun. When I watched it, I felt happy. <laughs> it wasn't perfect. Not as good as the second one, but better than the first one. I don't really love Excellent Adventure as much as I want to, even though it has George Carlin, but yeah. Face the music, kind of good. Cradle of the Rock, weirdly good. I really like that movie. I actually didn't imagine I'd like it that much, but I did. And uh, yeah, uh, Nord belongs to the Empire, not to the Stormcloaks. <laughs> Skyrim belongs to the Empire, not to the Nord. I, I, I'm losing my mind. And as usual, if you want, please send me a message on Anchor and I will uh, play it at the beginning of the episode. You might even shape the whole episode based on your message. 
and I hope to see you next week.